Hello, welcome back. In this series of videos, we've been examining the tools access offers to work with dates, uh, dates with times in uh, queries, in forms, and reports. You may recall from previous videos or from your own experience that the access always includes both a date and a time component when it stores a date value in a table. Now, the date or the time may be implicit or explicit, but they're always included in each date that you store, both the time and the date components. We have display formats, display formats that we can use to present that data, that date, time, data, in different ways for different purposes. For example, you may want to uh, shorten the display of a date uh, in order to work with uh, limited real estate on a form or report. Uh, you may want to format your dates in a particular way to call attention to different features. We also looked at the date functions that are available in Access. We've looked at a few. There are others that we haven't yet looked at. Uh, date functions allow us to apply logic to our dates so that we can do things like a group by a date or filter or sort on a date uh, correctly. We can uh, use date logic to do calculations that allow us to do analysis, for example, and other ways to uh, improve the efficiency and appearance of our forms and reports. In today's installment, we're going to look at a report which summarizes customer work by work week. Now, remind you that the customer data in this database comes from my customer time and billing database. Uh, I've obscured the names to protect the confidentiality of the customers. Also a reminder that we're using the US format for dates, which is month, day, year, uh, if your regional settings are different, you may see day, month, year. Just keep in mind that this is the U.S. format. So the report itself, again, customer work, summarized by work week. And I'm going to pick a particular date range that I know is going to give me some sample data that I want to use for this presentation. Notice that we're overlapping the end of a month, taking the full month of August, but we're also taking the last part of July. And we're going to take work done by work date up through August 31st. In the report, we've used that information to do several things. First of all, uh, we created groups based on the uh, week ending date for each Saturday in that group. And as you can see, uh, the group header here calls out Saturday, July 28th, Saturday, August 11th. I have to move this slightly to get August 18th, August 25th and September 1st. Notice that work done during that final week ending August 31st actually re is reported as of the week ending date, which is Saturday, September 1st. Before we go into the way the report itself is structured, let's look at the data behind it in the query where we uh, generate the data that we're using in this report. So we're going to go in design view. The report's record source is this query. So open the query in design view. Get rid of the property sheet. Notice that I have aliased my table names. Uh, I do this quite frequently because I like the uh, ease, I guess, uh, of working with uh, the uh, aliases as opposed to trying to write out uh, TBL, W-O-R-K, D-E-T-I, 
T A I L, and maybe misspelling it and having to start over. So, so it's just a way to uh, simplify the editing by applying aliases. So C is customer, W is work, and W D is work detail. Come back and look at that again. So, as I mentioned, this report is going to summarize data by the week in which it was done. To do that, we need to know a couple of things. We need to know uh, what day of the week the work was done on, and we need to know what is the Saturday corresponding to that work day. To get that, we're going to calculate a weekday number for each week date. Let's go into the designer, the expression designer. And look at how it's set up for the calculation. In the query designer, the alias is introduced with the name and the colon. And this tells Access, do this calculation and display the name of that calculation or the name of the field in which that calculation appears as weekday number. The calculation itself is the date part function. And I'm going to put the cursor in and remind you that we have IntelliSense in the, queer, in the expression builder. And if we click on this hyperlink, it will take us to help and it will explain how the date part function works. It consists of an interval. Now that interval could be year, month, day, uh, or in this case, W, meaning day of the week, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, where uh, by default, Sunday is day 1. And it's going to take the date, that's the second ar argument, and the third argument is the first day of the week. Now, this is an optional argument. If we include it, it explicitly says to start this week on this day. By default, it's 1, which means Sunday. You can change that. For example, if you need to use Saturday as day 1 in your week, uh, based on your regional or cultural settings, you can change it here. You can say, make Saturday, which is day 7, the first day of the week. And if you were to do that, then you would simply say 7 is the first day of the week. And you can also specify the first week of the year. That's not relevant to our report here. Uh, so I'm going to skip over that for now. The weekday number then is returned 1 through 7 from this calculation. We need that in order to calculate the week ending date. Actually, let's just go ahead and put this into the builder. Again. Put it up to where you can see it. There's the alias, the week ending date, and we're going to calculate the week ending date by taking the weekday number, which I just showed you, subtracting that from 7, and then adding that number back to the work date. I'll show you in the uh, datasheet view, uh, some examples and, and why that works the way it does. The last step is to take the date value of that. Now, I know that I'm going to get a date, but I also know that in my data, work date might be stored explicitly with a 
time component, which is not midnight. And if that happens, I want to return only the date value, which is month, day, year. We'll come back and look at this after we have looked at the data again. Okay. The work date is July 23rd. July 23rd is a Monday. Day one is Sunday. Day two is Monday. Day two is Monday. The 25th is day one, two, three, four. Weekday number four. 26th is Thursday, one, two, three, four, five. So, in order to get to Saturday, which is day seven, I need to say, from the second day of the week, add five days. From the fourth day of the week, add three days. From the fifth day of the week, add two days, and that will give me the week ending date. The calculation we used in the underlying records, or the underlying syntax, or SQL, is 7 minus that weekday. Let's get this back in the builder. Seven minus that weekday. So if the week if the weekday is 2, 7 minus 2 is 5, and we add 5 back to the work date, that will take us to the following Saturday. And that's how we get the week ending date for each of our work dates. Again, we use the date value to trim off any times, and when we display the work date, you'll see that we did the same thing. We used the date value function to trim off any time. And that way I know that uh, when I do my comparison here, uh, I'm going to see dates to dates to dates and not dates with times, which may or may not give me the results I want. So that's how the data is generated to go into this report. We have the work day and the week ending date, and we can group by the week ending dates. At this point, let's stop and take a break. We'll come back in the next video and talk about how we used the dates generated uh, in our query to create the grouping and sorting and filtering on this report. If you like what you saw today, please hit the subscribe button and come back and visit us again. Thank you.